winter in New England. Great for Courier and Ives. Hell for those of us who live there. Cold, snow, and cold. The cold would begin around Halloween, and it wouldn't end until at least June 1st. This is why New Englanders are cranky and bitter. <laughs> this is why we won the Civil War. The only good thing about that bitter cold was it kept Piney, the iguana, out of that damn window. <laughs> Even he couldn't take it. I think he had flashbacks of waking up in our oven. <laughs> Although this gave me no excuse when the order was given to get out there and shovel the driveway. Oh, man, I hated shoveling snow, which I had to do from the time I could walk. We had a slew of snow shovels dating back to the dawn of time. I swear some of them were made of stone because they weighed a ton. I could barely lift one, let alone shovel the foot of snow in the driveway. Now I remember, I remember one day being outside for three hours in a blizzard, listening to my father tell me that I shoveled like a girl, which to this day I'm still unclear about. <laughs> I came in the house hoping to have a cup of hot chocolate and sit and watch some underdog, but no. What I got instead was, get next door and help the Callahans with their driveway. Now, this is before her daughter was sent away. Callahans, whoa, wait a minute, Ma. No, no, you, you don't understand it. Uh, her daughter is over there. Don't you care about anyone but yourself. You get over there right now. Oh, man. I walked out the back door, started shuffling slowly toward their house. This was bad. This was really bad. Her daughter was there. She'd eat me alive. She'd tear my face off. She... Wait a minute. Something occurred to me. I never remembered seeing her daughter outside in the wintertime. Not once. Maybe the cold affected her secret powers. It worked on Piney the Iguana. Why not her daughter? Maybe this wasn't going to be so bad after all. I started up their driveway. I could see Mrs. Callahan cleaning the snow off the orange Batmobile. There was nobody else around. I walked right up to her. I said, do you need some help with your driveway? She jumped and spun like I hit her with a cattle prod. <gasps> it wasn't Mrs. Callahan. Her daughter put her face one inch from mine and said, go stand in the street, which of course to me sounded like, I'll eat your soul. <laughs> I started running, and in one second I realized I was running the wrong way. I was in their backyard, trapped. The only way out was a 50-yard sprint through a foot of snow to the woods, and then maybe I could work my way through the pricker bushes, get to the river, cross it, and be safe. Her daughter started to point at me. Ah! I put my head down and ran. When I got to the edge of the woods, I thought, wait a minute. I'm a healthy eight-year-old. She's an old woman. There's no way she's going to... Ah! I shot into the woods like a missile. Everything after that, I remember in slow motion. I heard my brother's voice say, She's right behind you! Really? I looked up, and there was Sherry. She was walking by the river. I tried to hit the brakes, but I hit a patch of ice. <laughs> Suddenly, I was airborne, flying out of the woods, over the bank, through the pricker bushes, and into the freezing Quinnipiac River. Splash! I stood up in the freezing river. It was only about a foot deep. Ice was forming on my clothes. I looked around. My brother was laughing hysterically. Sherry was walking away, slowly shaking her head. Her daughter was nowhere to be seen. One of my mittens was gone. My cap was gone. My snow shovel was gone. My brother stopped laughing long enough to state the obvious. Mother is going to kill you. He was right. Now, running through the woods in the wintertime, even without her daughter chasing me, was no easy trick. I was bundled up like Admiral Perry during an Arctic expedition. Hanging down our cellar stairs were 50 winter coats dating back to the 1940s. They were there because my parents could never throw anything away. You never know when the commies are going to attack. On top of every stair was a pair of those black rubber boots 
You know the old ones, the ones with the weird clips on them? We had those. We had uh, Charlie Brown hats, the, the ones with the ear flaps and the chin strap underneath and the little plastic medallion. We had sweaters and wool socks, long johns. I, I was warm, and I would have been happy, too, if not for one thing. For some reason, known only to God and my mother, I could not leave the house in the wintertime without wearing my ski pants. Ski pants, bright, shiny ski pants. We didn't ski. Guess what color they were? Gold. Gold, gold ski pants. What was my mother's deal with the color gold? We had gold house, gold hammerheads, gold ski pants. Maybe, maybe she thought that's what the rich people wore. Certainly none of my friends wore them. Nobody wore them, just me. And, and whereas gold hammerheads equaled being pantsed and dragged around the track, Gold ski pants meant an afternoon of Arctic torture. Here comes little Robbie with his 101 clothes in a box. <laughs> I top it off with a pair of bright, shiny gold ski pants. The snowball barrage would begin the moment I stepped out the back door and would end when I was finally caught and had snow jammed up every opening until I cried. And that was just my brother. In my own backyard, 